General Scott A. Kane, Commander, Air Force Research Laboratory, accompanied by the Command Chief, Chief Measure Sergeant Carlos E. Labrador, welcome to the 2023 AFRL Annual Awards Ceremony. I am Master Sergeant Barm Bratton from the United States Air Force School of Aerospace Medicine. And I am Technical Sergeant Joshua Wicker from the 711th Human Performance Wing. It is our distinct honor to serve as your narrators for today's ceremony, which recognizes our military and civilian teammates for their outstanding accomplishments over the past year. This year, we are celebrating AFRL's unified dedication to excellence, to one AFRL, one fight. Today's ceremony comes to you live from the Air Force Institute of Technology's Kenny Hall at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Using Zoom connections with most AFRL sites, which will broadcast the local presentations of each award. Supervisors, commanders, directors, and coworkers across the laboratory will be able to share in today's celebrations. Please stand for the arrival of the official party, the playing of the ruffles and flourishes, the general's march, the presentation and posting of the colors by the Wright Patterson Honor Guard and the singing of our national anthem by Technical Sergeant Ainsley J. DeWitt. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous sky, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare. Please remain standing for the invocation offered by Chaplain Tyler Bayless. I invite you to pray with me. Almighty God, today is a day of joyous celebration where we lift up individuals, teams, and the entire organization to pause to celebrate achievements, hard work, 
dedication, and enjoy a moment to just say thank you to each person here for their service to not only AFRL, but to the Air Force and our nation. But among all those gathered here, those, there are those that have distinguished themselves above the rest. We thank you for those recognized who not only do what's required, but went above and beyond to show excellence in all they do. We thank you for leaders and teammates that promoted excellence and provided the resources to achieve greatness. And gracious God, we know we cannot accomplish anything without family, friends, and loved ones that have supported, encouraged, and provided the foundation for our award winners. So for each of them, we ask your blessing and give you our thanks. As we reflect on greatness today, may those we recognize be an inspiration and encouragement to us all as we each serve the world's greatest Air Force. I ask this in all things in your name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Bayless. Please be seated. At this time, we'd like to introduce our special guests and distinguished leaders with us today. Please hold your applause until introductions are complete. Our special guests with us today include Mr. Jack Blackhurst, former AFRL Executive Director, and Ms. Abby Neal Schwederman, daughter of Mr. Richard Neal, from the Air Force Research Laboratory Command Staff, Colonel Joel Luker, Deputy Commander. We are also joined today by our esteemed directors, deputy directors, senior leaders, supervisors, and team members across the entire enterprise. We would like to take this time to introduce our many directorates participating in today's ceremony. When your directorate is called, we want to hear you. Don't be afraid to get loud. Joining us at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, the 711 Human Performance Wing. <laughs> Integrated Capabilities, RS. STO, AFWorks RG, Aerospace Systems RQ, Materials and Manufacturing RX. Sensors, R-Y. And last but not least, the Commander Support Staff and Functional Directorates. And our directorates hosting via Zoom at our geographically separated units. From Fort Sam Houston, Texas, the 7-Eleventh Human Performance Wing. From Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, Directed Energy, RD, and Space Vehicles, RV. From Maui Research Site, Hawaii, Directed Energy, RD. From Rome Air Force Base, New York, Informations, RI. From Edwards Air Force Base, California, Aerospace Systems, RQ West. From Arnold, Tennessee, Aerospace Systems, RQ. From Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, Munitions, RW. From Arlington, Virginia, Air Force Office of Scientific Research. We also have colleagues joining us from all over the world via Zoom connection to include Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, the Pentagon, District of Columbia, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Cambridge, Massachusetts, Austin, Texas, 
London, United Kingdom, Melbourne, Australia, Tokyo, Japan, and Sao Paulo, Brazil. Thank you all for joining us as we celebrate the 2023 AFRL Annual Award Ceremony. And now for opening remarks, we welcome our commander, Major General Scott Kane. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's good, good to see that you're competitive even in the, the opening and the cheering here. I was wondering if uh, we were going to declare a winner for that international competition. It's a pretty awesome start. Um, hey, uh, I, I, I want to first start with uh, just uh, uh, some welcomes and thank yous. Uh, you know, all the leadership that was announced, appreciate uh, them being here. We've got a couple of distinguished guests. Uh, uh, guests, Mr. Blackhurst, it's great to see you. And uh, Ms. Abby Neal uh, uh the daughter of Richard Neal. Um, I want to thank uh, the uh, AFIT staff. I'm not sure if they're in the, the hall with us here, but for letting us uh, come into Kenny Hall. Um, and then uh, just say thanks uh, for the Base Honor Guard and that uh, beautiful national anthem, too. Um, you know, I, 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 we've got a ton of teammates, supervisors that are here. Uh, we, we know that nobody excels in a, in a vacuum, and so it's the uh, work of all of you that uh, are represent is represented by these awards that we're going to give out. And that'll be a theme that uh, I'll, I'll continue to, uh, to propagate as, we, uh, as Chief and I make our comments today, but this is really about the, the team. Um, you know, and I, it, it's about all of you, it's about our workforce. I like to call you our ultimate advantage. Uh, you might have heard that before, and uh, so I, I just want to say that you know the, the achievements that we're going to be recognizing today really have a, a major impact on our Air Force, our Space Force, and on our, our Joint Force. And so while we're uh, celebrating uh, individuals, uh, be they military, enlisted, civilian, um, it's, uh, it's really about that team. But it's, it, it really is eye-watering the, the array of talent that's going to be displayed here teams from all, all around the world. Um, so I, I, I said this will be the theme, but our, our real success comes when we work together uh, across this team, across the disciplines, across the many talents that you have. And uh, I, I will say that our nation is, is counting on us. They need us more than ever right now um, to, to continue to move science and technology, continue to uh, deliver uh, integrated solutions and to continue to advance war fighting. Uh, and that's really what's going to ensure our continued supremacy in, in air and space. And, I, and I'll say there's a sig significant demand on us, uh, maybe even call it pressure on the whole S&T enterprise to just always be innovating, inventing, exploring, advancing the state of the art. And as you know, the, the Department of the Air Force is posturing to meet that challenge, the challenge of great power competition and I'll say we have a significant central role in, in continuing to build the, the future force. We've already been driving the fight and uh, accelerating science and technology in alignment with the Secretary of the Air Force's uh, priorities. But now, in the wake of great power competition, we have to continue to, to build momentum. We've got a lot of it, I'll say. We've got to continue to build on that momentum. We've got to continue to evolve and continue to embrace change because um, we're going to continue to move our lab forward and the department forward. And I think we're, we're well, well postured for, for success already, and we're, we're a key central part of uh, the Air Force Materiel Command and capability development, as I already articulated. Um, you know, in, I, as we uh, see these changes on the horizon, um, you know, pulling ourselves together, synchronizing ourselves to – uh, not only uh, integrate internally, but also externally with our partners, to integrate with our acquisition partners so there's a tech pull uh, in addition to that tech push that we give. Um, and, and there's no doubt that our depth of expertise, our basic research, our applied research is now as important uh, as ever uh, as, we, as we continue to uh, evolve. Now, uh, I, I think that uh, this isn't um, – this really isn't uncharted territory for us. And uh, it's maybe even part of our origin story, if you, if you want to take this back, back to the uh, origins of the Air Force, actually before there was an Air Force. And so a lot of you have probably uh, seen Masters of the Air uh, at this point. 
Um, even if you haven't, you're familiar probably with the strategic bombing campaign that we uh, executed in, in Germany, against Germany in World War II. Um, and so there was a theory, uh, hadn't been, hadn't been uh, previously tried in battle, but that we could defeat the enemy by attacking their infrastructure from the air. And uh, hadn't, hadn't been done before, but it was science and technology that was pushing the innovations, pushing the, the technology to uh, bring this to the fight. And it was stuff like uh, air-cooled radial engines. It was a McCook field, for those of you that are familiar with that local uh, airfield, as it was called then, uh, engineer Sam Heron, who made the uh, tech breakthroughs that led us towards uh, more powerful four-engine bombers. Uh, superchargers, the U.S. was the only World War II uh, nation that uh, fielded turbo superchargers on a, a number of our combat aircraft, the B-17, the B-24, the P-47, the P-38. Uh, autopilot systems even were nascent at that point. Uh, we uh, paved the way for not only uh, level platforms with bomb sites that could hit those infrastructure targets, but we also used that to pave the way for future fly-by-wire that was developed in the 60s and 70s. And then human systems. Uh, we, we can't take for granted oxygen equipment, warm clothing that was in those, uh, those aircraft that I mentioned, so the pilots and the, and the crews could go to higher altitudes, carry out the missions without being vulnerable to those physiological threats. And that was the aeromedical laboratory at Wright Field uh, that developed that, uh, that clothing, those oxygen systems back in the 1930s. So it was all those technologies working together to uh, create what I described as and what really was a, a new way of warfare in a, in a new war fighting domain. And, uh, and that's what uh, gave our allied forces a war winning advantage. I talk about advantages, advantages a lot. That's what we do here is generate advantages. And it couldn't have happened without the technology that was developed in the lab. And it couldn't have happened without the, the people that were daring, that were, that were pushing aviation where it hadn't, hadn't been before. And so science and, and technology, our medics, have always been driving the fight at uh, AFRL. And uh, uh, we, we continue to be the unseen wingman out there in the field. Um, I, I think if, uh, if I could be so bold, I'd say you're part of that legacy. Um, but uh, y you're making history today as we evolve into this era of great power competition. And so uh, uh, we'll move on now to recognizing some individuals, but I just wanna make sure it's very clear to all of you that it's you that's uh, the key to our success. Without you, we can't win. Um, and uh, we're gonna shift the spotlight onto uh, some of those, uh, those spectacular individuals and all these nominees today that showcase their uh, brilliance. Um, but uh, I, I'm proud to lead this entire amazing team, all of you, um, and really humbled uh, by all of your excellence and your dedicated uh, dedication to our mission. So thank you. Thank you, General Kane. As one AFRL, today is about honoring our esteemed military and civilian teammates. Before we proceed, let us take a moment to acknowledge all of our outstanding nominees. To be nominated for an annual award signifies an achievement in itself. Across the board, the work you do is critical to AFRL's mission. Thank you. We will begin by honoring our nine AFRL winners that are now the Air Force Material Command nominees in the following categories. Though these winners were previously announced, today we celebrate their achievements as one AFRL. As a reminder, if you are coming on stage to receive an award, please enter stage left and exit stage right. The Airman of the Year Award goes to Senior Airman Cameron A. Harris, from the 711 Human Performance Wing, Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. <laughs> Senior Airman Harris is a bioenvironmental engineering technician and served as the Air Force Radiation Assessment Team Instrumentation Lead. 
Airman Harris oversaw a $17 million deployable lab during a five-day, 5,000-member joint field training exercise, enabling United States Pacific Command and Northern Command's nuclear response mission and earning an Army Achievement Medal. When asked what he likes most about his position, Senior Airman Harris states, I am appreciative and honored to accept this award. It is easy to be great when I am surrounded by stellar leadership and outstanding wingmen. Congratulations. The non-commissioned officer of the year goes to Technical Sergeant Kayla A. Huntley from the 711 Human Performance Wing, Air Force Base, Ohio. Accepting... Accepting on her behalf is Colonel uh, Joanna Rents. Technical Sergeant Huntley overhauled the Bioenvironmental Engineering Officer Course, steering a 10-person Tiger team and integrating the strategic focus of 27 senior bioenvironmental engineering leaders that cut deployment qualification times by 50%, earning them the Air Force Material Command, United States Air Force Bioenvironmental Non-Commissioned Officer of the Year Award. Technical Sergeant Huntley appreciates that her job allows her to impact the entire bioenvironmental engineering career field in addition to teaching technical skills to both our enlisted and officer personnel, Huntley is able to assist in the creation of future training tools and courses. She states, I joined the United States Air Force to follow in the footsteps of my mother, who retired as first sergeant. Today, she is my key mentor and always encourages me to fight for my airmen with all of my heart. Congratulations. The Senior Non-Commissioned Officer of the Year Award goes to Master Sergeant Jenna A. Heber from the 711 Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Master Sergeant Heber is the Superintendent of the Analytical Services Division and managed a $3 million Air Force Global Strike Command Missileer Cancer Study coordinated training logistics, two contracts, three labs, and the analysis of 6,000 samples in less than three months, marking it as the largest single environmental sampling in the Air Force School of Aerospace Medicine history. Master Sergeant Heber will be graduating from nursing school in May, completing nursing school where she has been equipped with valuable skills, deep sense of empathy, and adaptability. As a leader, Master Sergeant Heber brings a blend of clinical knowledge and people-centric approach to effectively guide and support her team, ensuring optimal performance and a positive working environment. She appreciates how her position allows her to engage in activities outside of her primary roles at AFSC4T, enabling personal growth and allowing her to bring a unique perspective to her managerial role, creating a well-rounded and fulfilling professional experience. Congratulations. And the winner of the First Sergeant of the Year Award goes to Senior Master Sergeant Timothy Sigafus from the 711 Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. As the first sergeant for the Air Force Research Laboratory, 711 Human Performance Wing, and USAF School of Aerospace Medicine, Senior Master Sergeant Sigafus has been, trust, has been the trusted advisor and mentor to the commander and over 2,000 total force members at six geographically separated units, eight detachments, and four Air Force installations. He is the key advisor on all administrative and disciplinary actions. Master Sergeant Sigafus, in response to what he loves best about his position, shares the best part about being a first sergeant is having the privilege to assist and support airmen on a daily basis, being able to support and take a knee with airmen on their worst days and celebrate the good days. Being a first sergeant has been the hardest, most demanding and stressful job, but also the most rewarding job in my 25 year career. It has made me a better leader, husband and father. Congratulations.
the company grade officer of the year goes to First Lieutenant Michael P. Thompson from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Presenting the award is Dr. Sherry Welsh. Lieutenant Thompson demonstrated excellence in his primary and deployed roles. He ran a $20 million directed energy based defense program while in CONUS, culminating in a successful capstone test. While deployed, he fixed CENTCOM planes damaged beyond tech order limits. Also while deployed, he won the squadron's CGO of the year and the group's CGO quarter twice. When asked what Lieutenant Thompson appreciated most about his position, he stated, I have received some incredible opportunities to work with novel technology. I can't think of many places I could go in the field with leading edge technology as a developmental engineer. I have been able to participate in field tests for several different systems, was certified in aircraft battle damage repair engineering, have deployed to support maintenance on the KC-135, and got to field test AFRL's CUAS capabilities on its operational assessment. I'm super excited to see what else the Air Force offers over the rest of my career. Congratulations. <laughs> The field grade officer of the year goes to Lieutenant Colonel Brian M. Ralston from RG AFWorks. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Ralston represented AFWorks as an absolutely superior leader. As a member of the AFWorks Prime Division, he often represents the Air Force in congressional engagements, media interviews, and speaking engagements. Additionally, he launched a new prime program focusing on accelerating dual use autonomy, gaining personal approval from the SECAF and the Undersecretary of the Air Force for Acquisitions. Lieutenant Colonel Ralston also planned the longest fully autonomous gate to gate flight by a Cessna 208 aircraft and launched two new innovative rapid prototyping programs to answer AFSOC and COCOM operational needs. Lieutenant Colonel Ralston states that the amazing team he is surrounded with paired with the empowerment and trust from leadership allows and enables him to do great things for America. Congratulations. The Civilian Category 1 Award winner is Caitlin M. O'Connor from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Ms. O'Connor was handpicked interim assistant to director and filled two sudden civilian vacancies to help onboard the new military executive officer. Ms. O'Connor updated official correspondence process and compelled 100 taskers earning AFRL CAT Civilian or CAT 1 Civilian of the Quarter Award. She coordinated fiscal year 23 execution and fiscal year 24 planning for the $5.3 million rapid response lab budget to include 120 credit card purchases at $160,000 total. Completing new over plan concept to meet 100% expenditure goal in 14 months enabled 120 time urgent DAF support projects to deliver over 25 solutions for system mishaps, productions, and demonstrations. Ms. O'Connor loves being able to support a mission that has impacted legacy systems, current systems, future platforms, space, and everything in between. She states, although I am more behind the scenes, being able to help propel the mission forward in any way that I can is something that I strive for. Being a part of this new era is per both personally fulfilling and critical to the mission and continuation of the work of AFRL and the U.S. Air Force. Congratulations. The Civilian Category 2 Award winner is Anthony Cristiani from the 711th Human Performance Wing, Baltimore, Maryland. Presenting his award is Colonel Bruce Lynch.
Mr. Cristiani managed Sea Stars Baltimore's robust simulation lab and oversaw 215 scenarios for 237 joint service members to improve medical readiness across 76 medical groups in the Department of Defense. He also completed the Joint Service Canine Tactical Combat Casualty Care Course to become the site subject matter expert, instructed 15 military working dog lectures to prepare 256 warfighters to provide life-saving interventions to 1,600 Department of Defense working dogs. Mr. Cristiani has a strong passion for the mission and absolutely loves his job and the team at Sea Stars Baltimore. Congratulations. The Civilian Category 3 Award goes to Rachel L. Vickhouse from the 7-Eleven Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Ms. Vickhouse is the Networked Integrated Tactical Training Exercise Technical Lead and directed 38 personnel in the planning and execution of 122 joint exercises aligning Air Force Research Laboratory technology with Special Operations Command Warfighter training priorities to complete 75% of the MQ-9 and 100% of the Joint Terminal Attack Control operation, Operational Readiness requirements. Ms. Vickhouse states, the best organization for the Air Force to prototype and rapidly test critical technologies is the lab. Being able to solve real-world problems is the best part of being a government civilian. Equip an airman with all the best tech in the world, and the human is still what will succeed or fail. The will to act is always going to be a piece of the AFRL that must be studied. I have had the honor to experience pieces of the war the past 12 years that no female ever would. I am eternally grateful for AFRL. Never stop investing in the people. Congratulations. Please join me in a final round of applause as we congratulate our nine winners and wish them luck at the AFMC level. Congratulations. Let's continue to honor our remarkable workforce with the next round of awards, highlighting the excellence displayed across our AFRL enterprise. Our remaining awards recognize extraordinary individuals and teams who drive the fight and champion AFRL's science and technology mission. For each award category, we will be announcing the nominees while displaying a slide showing the nominees' pictures on the main screen. We ask that the audience and those with live mics on the line, hold their applause until all names have been read. We will then announce the winner who will come forward at their location to receive their award. Those attending virtually will be spotlighted on Zoom to be congratulated. The nominees for Individual Mobilization Augmentee Company Grade Officer of the Year Award are Captain Jacob Pradokas from AFOSR Arlington, Virginia. Captain Jean-Elie Pierre from RD Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Captain Matt K. Fowlers from RQ Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Captain Joshua T. Seri from RY Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. <laughs> the Individual Mobilization Augmentee Company Grade Officer of the Year goes to Captain John Elie Pierre, RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Presenting the award is Dr. Sherry Welsh, and accepting on behalf of Captain Perry is Mr. Kenneth Miller. <laughs> Captain Pierre led a six person machine learning team by identifying and gutting five duplicate processes. The effort slashed high performance computing time 7% and delivered software one month early for the DOD's first counter drone swarm demonstration. Congratulations. Up next is the Individual Mobilization Augmentee Field Grade Officer of the Year. This year's nominees are 
Lieutenant Colonel Tanisha Jones Vincent from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia. Major Stephen I. Ferris from RQ, Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Lieutenant Colonel James M. Wallenjevitz from RV Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Lieutenant Colonel Michael D. Troyer from RW Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Lieutenant Colonel Phillips A. Yarbrough from RY Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The Individual Mobilization Augmentee Field Grade Officer of the Year goes to Lieutenant Colonel James M. Wallenjevitz from RV Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Presenting the award is Miss Aaron Petty John, and accepting the award on his behalf is Miss Deborah Fogel. Lieutenant Colonel Jim Wollenjevitz provided critical surge and backfill support as an IMA reservist with the AFRL RVE operations cadre. Lieutenant Colonel Wollenjevitz reviewed space operations plans for space situational awareness and cis lunar missions, leading to discovering an operational gap and providing 16 actionable recommendations and 06 level leadership engagement. Additionally, he made it a priority to mentor several reservists and junior civilian members, ultimately leading to a successful cross-directorate satellite operating training seminar, which has highlighted to the AFRL commander. Finally, he drove cross-org satellite ops consultation, which informed a $50 million satellite test plan, paving the way for Secretary of Defense level visibility tests. Lieutenant Colonel Wallenjevitz enjoys empowering and motivating SNEs to be innovative and helping to transition technology to the warfighter. Congratulations. The next series of awards honor the civilians and military personnel working in our administrative and supervisory roles. The nominees for the Administrative Excellence Award are Christina R. Thomas from XP, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Amanda L. Reading from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Lori J. Stafford from RI, Rome, New York. Elissa B. Searcy from RQ, Edwards Air Force Base, California. Richard C. Gatilia from RW, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. And Justin D. Schuler from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The Administrative Excellence Award goes to Elissa B. Searcy from RQ, Edwards Air Force Base, California. <laughs> Presenting the award is Colonel James Roche. Ms. Searcy Overstraw administrative and logistical services to six rocket test sites, 15 <laughs> space industry customers utilizing digital transformation tools to smooth day-to-day -day operations for a 65 square mile site. She handled $110,000 in purchases for the test sites, ensuring smooth business operations for several active rocket test efforts and served as the focal point for purchasing 114 personnel. Additionally, she led the Site Booster Club, raising $4,500 and hosted seven recurring monthly events, including socials, cook-offs, and contests, boosting the remote site's morale immensely. Ms. Searcy loves her job as an administrative assistant at AFRL because it allows her to support important <laughs> research and development efforts. <laughs> Collaborate with a talented team and engage in diverse tasks that keep her challenged and motivated. The opportunity for professional growth and the satisfaction of contributing to impactful projects make every day fulfilling and rewarding. Congratulations. The nominees for Senior Administrative Excellence Individual Award are Annette D. Armstrong from the 711th Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. 
Hannah E. Morgan from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia. Yvette Baca from R.D. Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Mary Beth Gordo from R.I. Rome, New York. Magda Salazar from R.Q. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Caitlin M. O'Connor from R.X. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Michelle S. Grubb from R.Y. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The Senior Administrative Excellence Award goes to Annette D. Armstrong, 7-Eleven Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Base, Ohio. Ms. Armstrong represented the Warfighters Interaction and Readiness Division with great professionalism. She standardized administrative processes during the execution of a massive division restructure ensuring adoption across 200 realigned positions and four new branches, ensuring reorganization success in only nine months. When asked what she enjoys most about her position, Ms. Armstrong stated everything. I love being surrounded by amazing people, brilliant people. I love being a part of our great military. I love each and every one of my coworkers. They have supported me, pushed me, taught me, led me, calmed me, lifted me, and showed great patience with me. Congratulations. The nominees for the Supervisory Award are Lieutenant Colonel John W. Dalagoposki from XP Wright Pat Air Force Base, Ohio. Staff Sergeant Molly V. Fairhawk from 7-Eleven Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Irina R. Pala from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia. Dr. Richard K. Nelson from RW Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Dr. Shanae D. Paisley from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Daniel L. Devaney from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Tiffany L. Robinson from RG AFWorks, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Anna Marie H. Bleeking from RI, Rome, New York. Ronald L. Davidson from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Suzanne E. Emerson from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Kenneth D. Bull from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Kenneth R. Seltz from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. And the Supervisory Award goes to Kenneth D. Bull from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Presenting the award is Ms. Erin Pettyjohn. Mr. Bull led, planned, and managed over 245 branch research efforts worth $523 million, supporting more than 23 flight experiments and 35 top United States Space Force tech needs, garnering over $70 million per year from external partners. Additionally, he was responsible for hiring and performance management of 42 civilians and military members, as well as oversight of branch research and development. Despite the departure of nine team members, he was able to recruit and hire 14 new civilian personnel to fill the gaps, including a principal scientist from Los Alamos National Laboratory to lead research collaborations with the Department of Energy. Mr. Bowl is a nationally recognized expert in space and strategic electronics and radiation effects. He currently is leading a branch develop developing pervasive technologies for NSS spacecraft. Mr. Bowl states that working with outstanding S and ES on research and development on the next generation technologies for all United States Space Force spa spacecraft is the best part of his position. Congratulations. Named for the Major General H. L. Pringle, whose leadership was inspirational during a period of major strategic change impacting the entire department of the Air Force science and technology enterprise. Her vision, dedication, a relentless focus on empowering the laboratory workforce was a source of clarity and confidence. Her actions enabled numerous successes delivering game-changing science and technology, 
achievement of a one lab, two services identity to support the U new United States Space Force. Early successes in digital transformation and implementation of AFRL's first ever human capital strategy to enhance the recruitment, retention, and development of a 12,500 member total force. The award recipients exemplify the vision, energy, professionalism, and dedication to leading, growing, developing, and empowering their personnel, as personified by former AFRL commander, Major General H.L. Pringle. The nominees for Major General H.L. Pringle Leadership Award are Master Sergeant Kayla Scobie from the 711th Human Performance Wing, Air Force Base, Ohio. Uh, Master Sergeant Christopher P. Bodu from RI, Rome, New York. Major Andrew M. Beauchamp from RX, w Wright Pat Air Force Base, Ohio. Captain Tyler B. Hussey from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Captain Hunter H. Mangira from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Jason P. Eskew from DP, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. <laughs> Sylvia Terrell from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia. Sabrina S. Matias from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Kate E. Brown from RG, AFWorks, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Rachel E. Bellanova from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Haley R. Chow from RW, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. William A. Adams from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. And the winner of the Major General H.L. Pringle Leadership Award goes to Major Andrew M. Beauchamp from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Major Beauchamp led a 61-member, world-class soft matter and responsive material development team leveraging $1.4 million in core funding to secure an additional $13 million for high impact research in sensors, 3D printing, computing, and other areas. As a hand-picked special, uh, special assistant to the Air Force Chief Scientist, he also co-organized a 60-person AI accelerator innovation and technology workshop on combat collaborative aircraft led the, Air, uh, the Department of the Air Force Level Science and Technology Awards process and consolidated Department of the Air Force feedback on the National Aerod Aeronautics Science and Technologies priorities with the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. In response to what he likes best about his position, Major Beauchamp states, I love that my role lets me support a team of world-class SNEs who continually pushed the boundaries of science and technology for the Air Force. My role as a section chief and supervisor is second to the people on my team. Congratulations. The nominees for the Senior Leadership Award are Lieutenant Colonel Ryan M. Middleton from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Lieutenant Colonel Javier A. Escobar from RW, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Senior Master Sergeant Jamie L. Klein from the 711 Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Thomas R. Nelson, Jr. from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Robert W. Norton from DP, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Jerry R. Lautenschlager from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia. Candace L. Locke from RG AFWorks, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Kurt K. Lachave from RI, Rome, New York. Ryan T. Battelle from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Kevin M. Bryant from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. And Mark E. Wunderlich 
from R.Y. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The Senior Leadership Award goes to Lieutenant Colonel Javier A. Escobar from R.W. Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Presenting the award is Colonel Woodrow Anthony Meeks. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Escobar heads a 72-member, selectively manned, multidisciplinary division driving the nation's most sensitive advanced weapons, s and They plan, execute, and transition highly classified national priority technology worth $788 million, filling critical joint and DOD capability gaps necessary to win a great power competition. Lieutenant Colonel Escobar and his team pride themselves on providing capabilities to the warfighter. The best part of his job, the mission and his team. Congratulations. The Mission Support Individual Award recognizes the most outstanding contribution to the support of the Air Force Research Laboratory by an individual, enabling the accomplishment of the mission. The nominees for this award are John V. Schneider from FM, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, Matthew W. Myers from the 7-Eleven Human Performance Wing, Fort Sam Houston, Texas, Scott A. Gerstel from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia, Patricia A. Wise from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Gavaria D. Schock from RG, AFWorks Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Roberta A. Rapke from RI, Rome, New York. Brian K. Hobbs from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Shannon L. Ricks from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Paul Logan Harris from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Brian E. Mitchell from RW, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Michelle L. Duffy from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. And Judith A. Lynch from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The Mission Support Individual Award goes to Patricia A. Wise from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Presenting the award is Dr. Sherry Welsh. As RD's Strategic Programs Analyst, Ms. Wise crafted descriptive summaries for Congress for five program elements documenting RD's technical and financial progress for 32 programs, ensuring 100% compliance with no errors and a receipt of $204 million for fiscal year 24, facilitating research for lasers, high power microwaves, space domain awareness, and modeling simulation. Ms. Wise stated the best aspect of her position is her awesome team. Congratulations. The nominees for the Mission Support Team Award are the AFWorks Contracting Team, the Wing CSS Team, the SharePoint Migration Team, Intelligence and Special Security Team, RGF AFWorks Financial Team, Special Security Office Extension Team, Engine Execution Team, Manpower and Personnel Team, Phillips Research Site ServiceNow Team, Human Capital Team, Operations Refreshment Team, Financial Management Team. And the Mission Support Team Award goes to the AFWorks Contracting Team from PK Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. <laughs> team members include Yosef Hassan, Kimberly Allen, Lisa Beatty, Jonathan Betton, Michael Bonham, Daniel Brewer, Sandy Brudebaker, Daniel Bullock, Dylan Charney, Alexandra Davis, Ryan DeBonis, Angela DeLuca, Amanda Fouquet, Julia Hawker, James Helmlich, Daniel Holland, Candace Holliday, Jerry Hunt, 
Jordan Keeger, Zachary Kimple, Jennifer Lash, Jerry Latimer, Andrew Leach, Jessica Ligas, Mark Lucas, Valerie Mancinas, Kimberly Matthews, John McKaney, KJ McIntosh, Dariah Miller, Courtney Mora, Joshua Ortiz, Timothy Pallon, Tabora Paz, Candida P, you know who you are, sorry. <laughs> it's P-E-I-X-O-T-O, -O. I apologize in advance. Janae Perkins, Mackenzie Phillips, Aaron Plessinger, Amita Kuhara, Ariana Reed, Scott Setter, Zachary Sewell, Thomas Shea, David Shuey, Donna Sizemore, Anna Marie Smith, Sarah Smith, Catherine Sutposki, Matthew Thompson, Michael Vaughn, Chelsea Voss, Jessica Watson, Kyle West, Taylor Whitney, Kimberly Wright, and Elizabeth Zungia. The team issued 15 broad agency announcement or commercial solutions, opening solicitations for cutting edge tech across 162 DAF topics. This resulted in 7,000 plus proposals, 4,000 plus businesses receiving feedback, and 1,300 new contract or other transaction awards for 1.1 billion plus going to small businesses, fortifying the DAF innovation ecosystem. Congratulations. Our next two awards recognize achievement in international leadership and collaboration. The nominees for the International Individual Award are Major Adam C. Poulin from the 7-11th Human Performance Wing, Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Captain Rishi P. Patel from RV, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Dr. James C. Like from AFOSR, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Dr. Brian M. Anderson from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Dr. Remakanth Munti from RQ, Edwards Air Force Base, California. Dr. Nancy Kelly Lochlane from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Alan D. Carrick from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Brandon A. Taylor from R.W. Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. The International Individual Award goes to Dr. Brian M. Anderson from R.D. Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. <laughs> Presenting the award is Dr. Sherry Welsh. As principal investigator of the novel high energy laser source program, Dr. Brian Anderson led a 15 member team developing technology for a $9 million international project agreement with the Republic of Korea and a $3.8 million project agreement with Australian DST to develop new laser source technologies. Covering topics including record breaking pulsed lasers, high power laser fiber amplifiers, and to new 2UM laser sources and new coherently combined laser sources. Congratulations. The nominees for the International Team Award are Health and Performance Sensing and Assessment, CRA, Australia Team, Raven Team, AI Task Force Team, International US-UK Project Arrangement Team, Missile Warning and Tactical ISR International Team, International Flight Experiment Team, Materials Modeling and Manufacturing Advancement Through Theory and Experimentation Research Project Arrangement. The International Team Award goes to Missile Warning and Tactical ISR International Team from RV Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Presenting the award is Miss Erin Pettyjohn. <laughs> Team members include John M. Merrill, First Lieutenant Lucas N. Kuleza, Dr. Alex M. Friedman, 
Dr. Peter M. McMahon Crabtree, Dr. Wesley E. Peria, Dr. Patrick A. Thewills, Dr. Zachary C. Theus, and Radley J. Serafico. The Missile Warning and Tactical ISR International Team led and participated in multiple project agreements under the Resilient Space Capabilities Memorandum of Understanding. These include an 11-nation, $40 million effort to facilitate advances in space technologies, an 8-nation, $20 million multi-satellite military utility effort, and a 5-nation, $25 million hyperspectral effort. The efforts of the team ensure maximum exploitation of allied assets for future warfighter sensing needs. Congratulations. The next five awards recognize notable and distinguished achievements in scientific and technical management. The nominees for the Scientific and Technology Technician Individual Award are Technical Sergeant Luke D. Ogburn from R.I. Rome, New York, Weston C. Williams from the 711th Human Performance Wing, Fort Sam Houston, Texas, Jason L. Grabke from R.D. Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, George J. Suarez from R.Q. Edwards Air Force Base, California, Keith L. Brunner from R.V. Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, Donald E. Moore from R.W. Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. The Scientific and Technology Technician Individual Award goes to Donald E. Moore from R.W. Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Presented by Colonel Woodrow Anthony Meeks. As lead range controller, Mr. Moore directed 13 explosive operations at the 300-acre A-22 Fuse Experimentation Facility. They managed a $5.1 million arsenal of adapti adaptable penetrator launchers while overseeing a seven-member team executing diverse tests to assess component survivability for five OSDs, commercial and in-house research efforts totaling $2.2 million. Regarding what he likes most about his position, Mr. Moore stated, the money's good and they let me use explosives. <laughs> he also stated, I'm just a general purpose guy who plays a small role in providing our warfighters the best weapons possible. Congratulations. The nominees for the Scientific and Technology Technician Team Award are Bioeffects Technician Team from the 711 Human Performance Wing, Fort Sam Houston, Texas, RDH White Sands Missile Range Team from RD Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, Intelligence Integration and Transition Branch, RIEC Team from RI Rome, New York, RQO Research Operations Support Team from RQ Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Ground Test Team from RW Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. And the Scientific and Technology Technician Team Award goes to Intelligence Integration and Transition Branch Team from RI Rome, New York. Presenting the award is Colonel Fred Garcia. Team members include Master Sergeant Renee Brownell, Technical Sergeant Brian Burns, Technical Sergeant Nathan Metzger, Technical Sergeant James Minter, Technical Sergeant Luke Ogburn, Technical Sergeant Sean Rode, and Technical Sergeant Walker Zucks. Their ingenious collaboration and specialized expertise within the team spawned four exceptional information warfare teams. Their efforts markedly propelled and hastened technology operations across five distinct combat commands, bolstering the command's readiness to confront and prevail in the next peer-to-peer -peer conflict. Congratulations. <laughs> the 
The nominees for the Scientific and Technology Management Individual Award are First Lieutenant Megan M. Evans from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Dr. Jorge L. Chavez Benavidez from 711th Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Carla L. Martin from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Robin L. Bradford Viava from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Nicholas G. Uchek from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Jonathan E. Dan from IZ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Lucretia A. Maddox from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia. Colleen W. Roller from RI, Rome, New York. Seven uh, G. Stockbridge from RS, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Varlin V. Sheffy from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Christopher D. Hughes from RW Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. <laughs> the Scientific and Technology Management Individual Award goes to Dr. Kara Martin from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Kara Martin assumed a vital leadership role for hypersonic enabling fuels research, steering a 13-member multidisciplinary discipline uh, team while executing a complex critical technology portfolio. Additionally, the nominee forged three cross-directorate and intragovernmental partnerships to accelerate developments across the Department of Defense, Advanced Biotechnology and Energy Enterprises to align with national defense priorities and re-optimizations for greater or great power competition. Dr. Martin states that AFRL has introduced me to new subject areas and given me the opportunity to work on inter interdisciplinary teams to solve problems relevant to defense applications while under the guidance and mentorship of wonderful leaders and colleagues. She continues with, I will always value the lessons learned and the network I have become a part of due to my position at AFRL. I am extremely proud of the work we have accomplished as a team. I think of 2023 as one of the most exciting years of my life. As I had the opportunity, working together with my colleagues, Quinn Castleberry, to spearhead the research of our team. I believe moving forward, our team will continue to pave the way of novel fuel development and continue to be technical leaders within the community. And I am very thankful and honored to be a part of it. Congratulations. The nominees for Scientific and Technology Achievement Individual Award are Captain Luke T. Bergeron from RI, Rome, New York. First Lieutenant Stephen J. Gallegos from the 711 Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Joanna Lee from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia. Dr. Stephen C. Exelby from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Dr. Scott J. Pelter from RQ, Arnold Air Fo AFM, Tennessee. Dr. Christine E. Knott from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Edwin J. Wells from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. John M. Bettle from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. And Elisa L. Reeser from RW, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. And the Scientific and Technolo Technology Achievement Individual Award goes to First Lieutenant Stephen J. Gallegos from the 7-Eleven Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. As the Product Development Engineering Lead, Lieutenant Gallegos transformed the team's grant process, securing $6,000 for a pulse simulator prototype with medical application integration, facilitating eight exercises but defending 200 medics a year and aligning the Secretary of the Air Force's Operational Imperative Number 7, 
He also collaborated with joint operators and engineers to finalize a $10 million application for medical monitoring and patent documentation, resulting in successful product maturation for the end user and competitive selection as the joint program of record and Medical Center of Excellence's top priority for the Defense Health Agency. Lieutenant Gallegos says he loves being able to interact directly with the end users to find solutions that answer their specific needs. He enjoys being able to use his engineering degree to solve complex and technical challenges. Lieutenant Gallego states, we have a great team that is committed to providing innovative and rapid solutions, and that energy makes it fun to come to work every day. Congratulations. The nominees for the Scientific and Technology Achievement Team Award are Wargaming Branch, Biofex MS and A Team, Data Team, The Probability of Weapon Effectiveness Experiment, PWEX, Pod Engagement and Tracking Team, Interactive Learning, IL Team, The Rapid Energetics and Advanced Rocket, Manufacturing In-House Subscale Demo Team, the Bohr Team, Artificial Ionosphere Modification Team, the Liquid Plane Wave Generator Team, Polymers and Responsive Materials Continuous Flow Synthesis of, <laughs> y'all did this on purpose, <laughs> Peridium Salts Accelerated mul Multi-Objective Bayesian Optimization <laughs> with Active Learning. Thank you. <laughs> and the later tomography team. <laughs> the Scientific and Technology Achievement Team Award goes to Rapid Energetics and Advanced Rocket Manufacturing in-house subscale demo team from RQ, Edwards Air Force Base, California. <laughs> Presenting the award is Colonel James Roche. Team members include Levi M. Moore, Captain Dominique L. O'Brien, First Lieutenant Ethan N. Alshumins, uh, Second Lieutenant Rachel D. Hennessy, Second Lieutenant Kelsey G. Nortzger, uh, Dr. Timothy Miller, Dr. Timothy Gallagher, Dr. Jared M. Morissette, J. H. O., Adam J. Brand, Jacob C. Mar Marischak, Jeffrey E. Trapp, Fareed K. Rafa, Sandra J. Tomzak, and Melissa A. Searcy. The rearm, that's so much simpler, you should have led with that, <laughs> led an in house program to modernize the solid rocket manufacturing industry through creation of novel solid rocket propellant designs, moderation of propellant grain production methods, and development of innovative manufacturing techniques. These efforts utilized UV curable propell uh, propellant systems, 3D printing, and case on propellant winding, respectively, to produce a solid rocket motor from the inside out. The team was able to reproduce production, or excuse me, reduce production time by 90% and required tooling by 85% to achieve time and cost-effective motor production. These advancements deliver the industrial base a greatly needed surge in capability and plasticity to address a growing national joint service shortfall in munitions production. Congratulations. Mr. Blackhurst, please come forward and join General Kane and Chief Labrador on stage. The next award presentation is the Jack Blackhurst Innovation Award. This award recognizes individuals for successfully completing the proof of concept of an important new Air Force product or service or a new approach to deliver an existing product or service that renders prior approaches obsolete. 
The nominees for this award are Dr. Jeff W. Ritchie from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Dr. Steve S. Kim from the 711 Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Brandon M. Hensey from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Kenneth S. Obengardner from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Kelly L. Fent from STO, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Daniel J. Roberts from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia. Rachel E. Braun from RG AFWorks, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Sean M. Carr from RI, Rome, New York. Brian K. Stadler from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Eric M. Williams from RW, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Jeffrey N. Kingsley from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. And a Andrew T. Baster from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The Jack Blackhurst Innovation Award goes to Dr. Jeffrey W. Ritchie from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, presented by Dr. Sherry Welsh. A recent PhD graduate, Jeff W. Ritchie, assessed current Starfire capabilities and conceptualized a gap-filling capability to upgrade the site's state-of-the-art laser guide star source as well as atmospheric turbulence simulators significantly advance adaptive optics capabilities enabling crisp real-time imaging of objects in Earth's orbit during daytime. When asked what he loves about his work, Dr. Richley answered, working with great people to solve interesting problems that help secure the nation's future. We are pushing the limits of physics in support of space domain awareness. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Blackhurst, for joining us today. Our next award is the Organizational Excellence Award. For many years, the AFRL Annual Awards Program has had an Organizational Award category that recognizes leadership in expanding outreach to diverse talents and creating a workplace of belonging and connectedness for every member of this team. This year, we are pleased to rename this award category to better represent that scope and value proposition to the Department of the Air Force's Science and Technology mission. The newly renamed Organizational Excellence Award emphasizes the importance of providing an environment where every airman and guardian can thrive and meet their full potential in contributing to our mission. Recognizing that the simultaneous rapid transformation of today's warfighting environment and evolving U.S. demographics drive the need for innovative approaches to attracting, recruiting, developing, and retaining top talent. The Organizational Excellence Award nominees are the 711th Human Performance Wing, Air Force Office of Scientific Research Directorate, Informations Directorate, Aerospace Systems Directorate, and the Materials and Manufacturing Directorate. The Organizational Excellence Award goes to Materials and Manufacturing Directorate, RX. Except Accepting on behalf of RX is Chief Cultural Officer Dr. Susan Campbell and Director Mr. Darrell Phillipson. The Materials and Manufacturing Directorate has improved the culture through strategic pursuits to make RX a diverse, equitable, and inclusive and accessible workplace for all employees. By focusing on a more diverse culture, RX supports an environment where all people can bring their innovations, creativity, and engagement to support the greater Air Force mission. Multiple activities and initiatives contributed to fostering diversity and inclusion by building inclusion, respect, and fairness for all our ex-employees. Congratulations.
It is our honor to introduce the newest award category, the Technical Transition Awards. These four awards are bestowed upon the individual or team that has demonstrated significant impact to the science and technology ecosystem by improving acquisitions, delivering capabilities to the warfighter, enabling industry-driven solutions, and or applying research and development efforts that have laid the foundation for future transitionable products. Our first transition award is the Technology Transition to a System Program Office Award. This award recognizes an individual or team in an acquisition program office that incorporates the technology to enhance warfighting capabilities or reduces warfighting system lifecycle costs. This is the traditional transition path into the lifecycle acquisition process by incorporation or, and or insertion of AFRL technology into the program office lifecycle planning. The nominees for this award are the specific topic team from RG AFWorks, Austin, Texas, the robust information provisioning layer team from RI, Rome, New York, the Skyberg team from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, the F-35 outer mold line from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, Julie C. Smith, from RV Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, Stephen T. Parker from RW Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, and David C. Pretense from RY Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The winner of the Technology Transition to a Systems Program Office Award is David C. Prentice from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Mr. Prentice used capabilities from his newly awarded patent to transition critical technologies to a program of record. In addition, he delivered five prototype devices to integrate into the program offices, uh, avionics test uh, benches, reducing approval timelines for new avionics insertion from months to days. Finally, he demonstrated avionics bus monitoring capabilities that helped air crew and maintena maintainers rapidly understand anomalies and rapidly implement corrective actions. Mr. Prentice states, I love my job because I have been able to work directly with the warfighter and create a research product which assists them in their duties. So often a research project comes to its conclusion and is put on the shelf. There is an enormous feeling of accomplishment when you know all the hard work is being used by the warfighter. Congratulations. The second transition award is the Technology Transition Direct to the Warfighter Award. Recognizing an individual or team that has a product that has been developed and delivered for operational use by the warfighter. This product is produced, supplied, and supported by AFRL. This category includes AFRL components integrated into end products in collaboration with an outside partner. The critical requirement is that the AFRL product ends up in warfighter hands for operational use without a separate transition to a program office or to industry. In this case, AFRL must consider all aspects of fielding a product or system to include sustainment, training, logistics support, and operational activities. The nominees are the Operational Products Bat Doc Team from 711 Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The Semiconductor Laser Team from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. The Refinery Team from RG AFWorks, Austin, Texas. The Cross-Domain Solutions Team from RI, Rome, New York. The Grasshopper Test Team from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The Space Commercially Augmented Mission Platform Team from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Gregory L. Fitzhands from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. And Dr. Dalver Hopkins from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio.
And the winner of the Technology Transition Direct to the Warfighter Award goes to the Grasshopper Test Team from RS Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. <laughs> Team members include Michael D. Pilkerton, Thomas G. Howell, Craig M. Baker, Ronald D. Palmer, and John D. Andor. This team rapidly developed and demonstrated innovative special operations cargo delivery system, delivering up to 500 pounds of equipment to customers. The project delivered 50 plus systems to the warfighter. The AFSOC CRI team successfully demonstrated the full capability and reliability of the system in conjunction with pre-deployment spin-up activities with two simultaneous airdrop missions at Dugway Proving Grounds. The team also added the AFSOC standard ATAK mission planner application. The team also verified the Tiger team identified solutions of GPS repeaters for reliable onboard GPS initialization and coordinate transfer. Two grasshoppers were dropped and once again delivered 500 pounds of cargo well within accuracy requirements. AFSOC deployed four grasshopper systems OCONUS to an undisclosed location. All four systems were utilized in less than four weeks after the pre-deployment exercise and achieves excellent results in operational conditions. Congratulations. Our third transition award is the Technology Transition to Industry. This award recognizes a team or individual that enables industry to propose technology-driven solutions, enabling future military weapon system development. This is where AFRL science and technology activities lead to a significant increase in the capabilities of the U.S. industrial base to provide new or enhanced warfighter capability or reduced DOD system life costs. The nominees for this award are the Stratfy TactFi team from RG AFWorks Austin, Texas, the Streamvane ScreenVane team from RQ Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, the Space Antennas and Thermal, Thermal to Industry team from RV Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, the Weapon Systems Open Architecture team from RW Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, the Light Cured Sealant on Aircraft from RX Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, the Gallium Nitride Device team from RY Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, Dr. Sophie Ben Solomon from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia. Joseph D. Teague from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. The winner of the Technology Transition to Industry Award is the Gallium Nitride Device Team from RY, Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Team members include Dr. Kelson D. Chabick, Dr. Antonio Crespo, Dr. Andrew J. Green, Dr. Ahmad E. Islam, Gary R. Hughes, Dr. Denny E. Walker, Elizabeth A. Sowers, and Brian S. Poling. The gallium nitride device team developed a breakthrough electronic device fabrication process and successfully transferred this technology to a leading defense industry partner, Maycom Technology Solutions. <laughs> Maycom incorporated AFRL's process into their device fabrication line, resulting in a new state-of-the-art technology for the defense industrial base that will greatly accelerate radio frequency performance critical for modernizing radar, communications, and EW systems. Congratulations. The fourth and final transition award is the Technology Transition Internal Transition Award. This award recognizes the team or individual that applies research and development efforts that have resulted in created technologies as enablers for future transitionable products to be further matured by the transition recipient. These activities include technology transition within a technical directorate, 
between technical directorates or to other DOD services, to other government agencies, or to our international partners. The nominees are the Tech Transfer Team from SP Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, the Solid State Team from RD Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, the Project Staple Team from RG AppWorks, Austin, Texas, the Reed Targeting Team, Team Not Firm from RI Rome, New York. Okay, got it. I'm gonna read exactly what's on the paper here. <laughs> the High Altitude LiDAR Atmospheric Sensing Team from RQ Edwards Air Force Base, California. The Spacecraft Pervasiveness Hardware Government Transition Team from RV Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. The Optical Coatings Team from RX Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The Create RF Team from RY Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Justin R. Meadows from RW, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, and Dr. Patrick O. Bradshaw from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia. <laughs> the winner of the Technology Transition Internal Transition Award goes to the Project Staple Team from RG AFWorks, Austin, Texas. Presenting the award is Colonel Martin Salianis. Team members include <laughs> Team members include Major Victor Lopez, Colonel Martin Salianis, Lieutenant Colonel Fernando Nicolade, Lieutenant Colonel Brian Ralston, Cameron Carter, Craig Buying, James Hemlick, Angela DeLuca, Curry Wright, Joshua Fed, Sterling Alley, Jack Clark, and Matthew Alsbin. Project Staple is a program born from the Defense Innovation Unit engagement with UCOM Futures in support of operations in Ukraine. It was developed under an operational innovation cell named the Ghost Cell. Project Staple has shown how AFWorks accelerates agile and affordable technology to deliver disruptive capabilities. The program rapidly acquired 100 microballoons on behalf of the Ukrainian Ministry of Innovation and support to DITRA, SOCOM, and USOC testing to develop balloon payload and electronic capability. Congratulations. Now we come to AFRL's Commander's Awards. The Commander's Awards are personally selected by the Commander and are presented to individuals or teams within AFRL in recognition of their outstanding contributions to the laboratory's mission. The first category is the Commander, Commander's Cup Junior Force Individual Award. The nominees are Major Elizabeth H. Foley from the 711 Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Major Victor J. Lopez from RG AFWorks, Cambridge, Maryland. Captain Zachary T. Steed from XP, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Captain Justin S. Lee from RD, Maui, Hawaii. First Lieutenant Ethan N. Alciums from RQ, Edwards Air Force Base, California. Dr. Jill C. Brewer from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Dr. Catherine M. Berz Berzinski from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Brenton L. Minahan from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Sean J. Fee from RI, Rome, New York. Austin B. Elwanger from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. And Ethan R. King from RW, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. The winner of the Commander's Cup Junior Force Individual Award goes to Major Victor Salsa J. Lopez from RG AFWorks, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Presenting the award and accepting on his behalf is Lieutenant Colonel Jennifer Warren. Major Lopez is a true innovator in warfighter technology and rapid transition. As program manager at ARC Branch Spark Division, AFWorks, he manages an expansive portfolio 
tackling complex challenges in small UAS and counter UAS, as well as AI-enabled software solutions. His recent execution of the micro-balloon effort named Project Staple highlighted his success for supporting Ukraine defense and leveraging the SBIR program to acquire rapid capabilities. Major Lopez stated that he loves working with airmen across the Spark community who make a daily tactical difference. Working across the defense innovation ecosystem relies on ad hoc networks of teams who may not have a formal hierarchy. These teams require psychological safety to self-form and work in the margins. As a leader, it is a pleasure to support these types of teams that form across a variety of platforms and reduce the distance between tacticians and our s and communities. Congratulations. The nominees for the Commander's Cup Individual Senior Award are Lieutenant Colonel John P. Teekle from RG Atworks Pentagon, District of Columbia. Dr. Christine M. Kova Smith from XP Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Anthony Fries from 711 Human Performance Wing, Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Dr. Stacy E. Williams from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia. Dr. Jason F. Hammond from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Dr. Dean R. Evans from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Mark A. Esposito from RI, Rome, New York. Amy C. Burns from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Brenton S. Taft from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. James T. Krafik from RW, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Kara M. Storage from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Brittany A. Wells from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. And the Commander's Cup Senior Individual Award goes to Dr. Dean R. Evans from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. <laughs> Accepting on his behalf is Mr. Rudy Klosterman. Operational Experimental Lead and Program Manager for $175 million Rapid Dragon Palletized Munitions Campaign, taking SAF AQ and HAF A57 more mass to the fight concept from paper to live fire test of retargetable palletized JASM ERS from an MC-130J and C-17 with operational crews making affordable mass delivery possible. Answered call from AMC and AFMC commanders led successful live fire operational test employed in Indo-PACOM during Mobility Guardian 23. AMC commander called the Rapid Dragon extremely, extremely successful and pushed for immediate transition to Air Force programmer record. Congratulations. The nominees for the Commander's Cup Team Award are Tech Connect Team from SP, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, Public Health and Preventative Medicine Department from the 711th Human Performance Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, National Science Portal Pilot Team from AFOSR, Arlington, Virginia, Wildfire from RD, Maui, Hawaii, Challenge Team from RG AFWorks, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The CUAS Team from RI, Rome, New York. Mars Accent Vehicle Team from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Ultra Team from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. High Arctic and Polar Ionosphere Team from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Missile Utility Transformation via Articulated Nose Technology Skin Team from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, and the Infrared Search and Track Team from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. <laughs> the Commander's Cup Team Award goes to Counter Unmanned Aircraft Systems Team from RI, Rome, New York. Presenting the award is Colonel Fred Garcia.
Team members include Brendan J. Polin, Captain Troy Keel, Captain Brady Weaver, Glenn A. Larish, Michael T. Muccio, Kyle A. R. Holbritter, William J. Smith, Carson F. Woodford, Andrew D. Vanosten, Brio Routslaff, Martin M. Olfalt, Jr., and Philip J. Zalski. The team led the development of the rapidly deployable small unmanned aircraft defense system, integrating four separate systems and deploying three prototypes to USAFE as a forward operating base defense against drone threats. Congratulations. <laughs> Our final category of awards is the Commander's Cup Richard J. Neal Special Recognition Awards. This award was designed for special access programs to recognize people who were unable to compete in previous awards due to the sensitive nature of their work. The awards are named for Richard J. Neal, who epitomized the quiet professionalism and selflessness service required for those called to execute our special program activities. Mr. Neal passed away unexpectedly after almost 30 years of dedicated active duty and civilian service to the United States Air Force. His last duty assignment was as a senior plans and program engineer supporting highly classified special program activities across the AFRL enterprise. Because of the nature and sensitivity of the work, no citation will be given for these awards. To present these awards, we are proud to welcome Mr. Neal's daughter, Ms. Abby Neal Schwederman. Ms. Schwederman is an aerospace engineer at Air Force Life Cycle Management Center. The first award is the Commander's Cup Richard Neal Special Recognition Award for a junior individual. The nominees are Major Gregory C. Hartman from RV Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Dr. Zachary J. Hall from STO Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Ryan G. Schwingle from RD Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Brian D. Shepard from RI Rome, New York. Ryan E. Tatro from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. David G. Williams from RW, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Sarah K. Thomas from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. And Brandon T. Conrad from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. <laughs> the Commander's Cup Richard Neal Special Recognition Award for Junior Individual goes to Sarah Katie Thomas from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. When asked about her position, Ms. Thomas stated, I work with great people. I like that my job includes both theory and application, allowing me to use my brain and my hands. Congratulations. The next award is the Commander's Cup Richard Neal Special Recognition Award for a Senior Individual. And the nominees are Lieutenant Colonel James M. Wollenjevitz from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Dr. Richard S. Zapula from uh, the second from RV, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Jared S. Fellman from RI, Rome, New York. Ryan P. Samuelson from RQ, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Apruva I. Bopail from RS, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Tina T. Hartwell from RW, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Andrew M. Kordick from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. And Sarah B. Dooley from STO, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio.
The Commander's Cup Richard Neal Special Recognition Award for a senior individual goes to Sarah Dooley from yeah. STO, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. In answer to what she loves best about her position, Ms. Dooley states, I love that my job as a project engineer enables me to manage teams of contractors while also staying closely connected to the technology I'm helping to develop. Our work is important for the warfighter to establish and maintain air dominance against peer level threats. Congratulations. Our final award is the Commander's Cup Richard Neal Special Recognition Team Award. The nominees are Star Master from RD Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, Cyber Special Projects Team from RI Rome, New York, High Powered Adaptive Directed Energy System Team from RQ Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, XGO Domain Awareness Team from RV Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, 700 Five Guys Team from RW Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Special integration of graded filters for laser survivability from RX, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Zealous Tiger Team from RY, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. And Kill Chain Ops Analysis Team from STO, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The Commander's Cup Richard Neal Special Recognition Team Award goes to the Star Master Team from RD, Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Presenting the award is Dr. Sherry Welsh. Accepting on behalf of the team is Christina Osman. <laughs> team members include Christina Osman, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Gunther, Major Todd Laruvik, Captain Louis Sepulveda, Captain Asif H. Ali, Second Lieutenant Ian M. Blake, Second Lieutenant Jeremiah Galding, Second Lieutenant Isaac Hamblin, Dr. Dennis Montera, Dr. Stephen Massey, Dr. Odell Reynolds, George Joseph, Michael S. Schiller, Travis G. Erickson, James M. Wolongevitz, Zachary T. Brendan, and Lion, L, Lion G. Lusick. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Neil Schwederman, for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Master Sergeant Labrador and Major General Kane will now offer their closing remarks. I think, I think it's only appropriate to at least uh, start with a round of applause for our narrators. <laughs> wow, that is, uh, that's quite a script that they had to go through. Uh, but you know, like it's, uh, there's a lot of greatness to, uh, to celebrate. And so uh, I'm, really, uh, I'm really taken aback by, uh, I think one of my biggest uh, uh, observations is just the wide array of efforts, work, accomplishment, talent that we have. Uh, really here at the annual awards is where we really get a chance to really see it in, in kind of in one room, uh, in one venue. So that's something that it's gonna take a little while to get through, uh, but, it's, but it's well worth it. Uh, yeah, the outstations may not even uh, have an appreciation for how cold it is in the auditorium today. Um, that's sarcasm. It's actually burning up out here. But hey, um, seriously though, uh, we de we greatly value and uh, so thank you for joining us and because we greatly value this opportunity to recognize folks. And it's really not just about the winners. Uh, the the bigger story there is all the work that comes together to to make this stuff happen, right? Uh, so every nominee uh, and then every nominee not only at the AFRL level uh, but at the directorates and divisions. Uh, those are those are important accomplishments. Uh, there's so much talent that you know to be had that that, that it's a, it's a lot to recognize, right? So eventually you have to you have to kind of skinny down to uh, to the to those elite that actually are going to represent us to the, at the next level. Um, but but that's not to take anything away from all the work that was done um, uh, all, all across uh, the Air Force Research Lab. And really, this 
the body of work that we've just discussed, it's only a, a small glimpse of what we, what all, all the things that we do, uh, but it really speaks to the reputation that the Air Force Research Laboratory already has and we continue to improve upon. It also uh, speaks to why, when General Kane and I uh, go out and represent you, uh, why there's so much more um, uh, appetite and an understanding of the importance of what we bring, especially when it comes to the great power competition and, uh, and the work that's going on with regard to re-optimizing our Department of the Air Force. Uh, so with that, it, it brought to light a, a recent uh, quote from General Alvin, our Chief of Staff of the Air Force, uh, that he was basically reflecting on seminal events. Um, General Kane kind of touched a little bit about some, some uh, major events in our history that has shaped us. Um, and of course, making a correlation that right now is, uh, is we're approaching a, a what, he, what he refers to as a time of consequence. And, and actually, I, don't, I shouldn't say what he refers to. It is a time of consequence. And uh, what he says is, uh, what is more important are the times that preceded them. Speaking of seminal events, these are times of consequence. These are times when airmen, and I'll add in, and guardians, to make sure that it's inclusive of our, our air, full Air 4L team, these are times when airmen and guardians embody what is running in our DNA, the spirit of innovation, vision, and courage. The actions of those airmen and guardians in that time of consequence shaped those seminal events. So here we are at a crossroads, and what we, what we see in our, in our awards is part of a legacy that's being left behind, is a part of a legacy that continues to be written. Um, but it's not just those individual awards what we really have to um, uh, show our appreciation of is the culture, the climate, the ecosystem, uh, namely the supervisors that provided mentorship and guidance and supported our, our nominations coming together. So, so a big uh, thank you to the supervisors and the leadership teams that made that happen. That's part of your legacy also. So just, uh, just know with, uh, with all that work that was, uh, that was captured there, uh, General Kane and I are pr truly humbled uh, and ever proud to, uh, to represent you. Thank you for all you do. Well, uh, great words, Chief. Uh, t tough uh, act to follow, but uh, I want to add just a couple of thanks to that. Um, <laughs> We mentioned our, our hosts here, which that, that was uh, phenomenal that you guys uh, worked your way through that, so thank you. Um, I want to uh, thank some people from the Commander's Action Group who put this together. Um, Shannon Ty, Captain uh, Dual, uh, Patrick Ruth, uh, our VTC team. I mean, th like this is a serious orchestration event to uh, put all this together. Um, so uh, Jeremy Patton led that. Uh, the AV team here from AFIT helped out quite a bit. Of course, our PA team was all over this. Uh, from DP, Teresa Abney, and then uh, from our front office group, uh, Tech Sergeant uh, Co was uh, instrumental in making this happen. Uh, one, once again, I want to thank uh, Mr. Blackhurst uh, and uh, Ms. Neil uh, Schweiderman for, for being here today as well. Um, I guess I uh, um, want to just close uh, briefly with just thinking about uh, not only those uh, that we recognized here today, um, I mean, it, it is phenomenal, the breadth that we covered, everything from uh, a new patented technology to uh, something going into the field at an un undisclo undisclosed location. Um, we recognize the nominees uh, today as well. Uh, Chief mentioned the supervisors, but the teams around them, uh, and, and really it's every single one of you that's contributing uh, to, our, to our mission. And uh, it actually reminded me of a, a story about uh, when, when JFK visited NASA during the space uh, race uh, in, the, um, in that era. Uh, we're, we're in a similar area of comp era of competition now. And uh, he, uh, he noticed a, uh, a custodian, many of you have probably heard this, uh, this story, whether it's true or whether it's legend, um, carrying a broom. And he walked over and the president of, of the United States walks over and says, uh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm JFK, uh, wh what do you do here? And the uh, janitor's response was, I'm helping put a man on the moon, Mr. President. Um, and, you know, so in, in that one sentence, that brief response, um, it showed that, uh, that everybody there 
was connected to the mission. Everybody was connected to the purpose of NASA, actually the purpose of the nation at that point uh, in history. And so I tell you that today because you're all connected to that, that time of consequence, that purpose that we all share. Um, and everyone, no matter uh, what you do, uh, is a valuable member of this team, and I appreciate you. So thanks for what everybody on this team does for national defense. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Chief Master Sergeant Labrador and General Kane. And now we welcome everyone to please stand and join us for the Space Force song, the Air Force song, and the departure of the official party. Before we depart, let's give one final round of applause for all of today's award winners. Thank you all for joining us today. Have an outstanding Air Force and Space Force day.